Hey, good morning. So, the other day when I was doing the video of uh, how to clean your solar panels, it occurred to me after I had already produced the video and posted it that I missed a great opportunity to show you guys exactly how I mounted them uh, and how I engineered the stuff to mount them up there, uh, how I secured them, how we know they don't blow off at 65, 70 miles an hour or in a sideways wind storm or whatever else they throw at you. So uh, today I thought I'd go back and show you how we uh, how we got them up there, what we used to secure them, and uh, you know, I, basically how we uh, how we just engineered all of it. So I've got a local fab guy here that helped me make the brackets that I used to secure it, but I had to design them for what I needed and to make sure that it was going to be structurally secured and structurally safe, and uh, I wouldn't have any troubles out of it years down the road. Uh, this stuff is mounted about like a tank. I really believe you could destroy the whole trailer and these things are still going to be attached to the top of it. Um, my biggest fear was always one of these coming off going down the road and killing somebody and uh, I wanted to make sure that really I over engineered it. So come along with me and I'm going to show you how I did it. This is called Unistrut. You can buy this at uh, Lowe's, Home Depot. Uh, pretty much anywhere that sells structural things so of course you can see i'm specially uh they made it just for me no i'm just kidding i, I called uh i think i got this at lowe's and had them fix it so i could come pick it up and they put my name on it but what i did was i just took it and cleaned it really good kind of scuffed it up a little bit with the sos pad and then i went back and i painted it so as you can see it was originally like a silver galvanized color and then I just painted all of it black and uh, I did all that so it would just kind of blend into the trailer wouldn't look so bad sitting on top of it so anyway it's galvanized there's really no reason to have to paint it I just did it for aesthetics on top of the bracket I made some metal plates and the metal plates are actually bolted To the strut then these fasteners here is what you use in the unistrut that holds the plate and it has blue loctite on everything up here everything has got blue loctite to hold it in place and the nuts on the bottom I get where you can see it the nuts on the bottom are actually uh, nylon nuts so they're self-locking nuts to begin with and these up here have the blue loctite the brackets that are mounted to the uh, aluminum frame of the solar panels also has bolts in it and they are all have uh, lock washers and blue loctite so everything up here has lock washers and blue loctite on it so as you can see going across there is unistrut. There's two on here because that's where the two panels, uh, there's actually four panels, that's where two of them come together on both sides. And then the unistrut runs across. Kind of hard to see out here. The lighting's not, it's kind of working against me today, but you can see it goes all the way across. And then you can see right here, there's actually a pad that I had welded to this it sits on top of the corner of the aluminum piece for the trailer. Now, most of you know, there's a skeleton frame inside this trailer and there's a uh, square tubing. Runs behind here and there's a square tubing that runs down this way behind this. Also goes across in the top. So it's kind of like a roll cage here, but uh, all this is bolted directly to the uh, inside skeleton. And it's bolted all the way through with a nut on the inside. These uh, plastic nuts are just to cover up the hex head on it just to make it look a little more aesthetically pleasing. It's kind of a funny word, but it just makes it look nicer. And then as you can see, I ran uh, the electrical down the middle of it. And it runs to the front and then down the front, up under the trailer and then back inside to the charge controllers. So did this the same on, on every one of them. 
That's just a double. The rest of them are singles. The only reason I needed a double is because I had four panels coming together. Uh, these other small solar panels you see on the tops up here, they're to power my cameras, my surveillance cameras. Uh, they also work off the Starlink and the Wi-Fi. and lets me know if anybody's around the trailer when I'm gone. And then you can see on this one back here, there's also another piece of uh, quarter inch plate. Like I said, I put them together and it, uh, it's got a mount for my cameras. But again, all this stuff is probably overkill. I probably could have went with lighter weight materials. But I just wanted to over-engineer it just to make sure that I never had an issue with it. So far, we got several thousand miles on it. No problems. I check it every time I get up here to uh, look at the top or clean it or wash it. And I'll make sure that I don't see anything loose. Pull on them, tug on them. Uh, just, just no problems with it. Again, the lighting is not the best because it's shading today. You can, you can see how all of it's mounted. Uh, in the middle, in the middle of it, I did the same thing I did on the outside. And I don't know if I can get it over there to where you can see what I'm talking about. you can see where I put all the brackets in the middle and there's a gap between all the panels uh, and I got plenty of air I did it on purpose I could have slid them together and done that but I wanted to have enough air to circulate around these panels keeping the panels cool is uh, is really important on solar they don't produce they don't produce as much power if they get hot so you always want to make sure that you got air going around them plenty of air sitting still and there's plenty of air going down the road uh, you can see, you can see the air gaps between all of it. Also helps out with uh, cooling during the day. So helps out with cooling. It uh, shades the roof. I'm trying to do three things at one time here. I'm trying to carry the ladder around and do this too. It uh, helps cool the roof down so the unit don't have to work as hard. And then when you come around the front, you can see that there's a, a chase, raceway, whatever you want to call it, uh, comes down the front of it. And then it goes down to the bottom. And then it goes around and up inside the trailer. And that's where the charge controllers are at. So it's sitting here today. The, uh, Mini splits running at 75 degrees inside. As you can see, I am not hooked up to shore power. I never hook it to shore power when I got solar working. Uh, I have enough power that it can run for about two days. I've got 24 volts, uh, a 24 volt system, and I run a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. I have four 24 volt, 300 amp hour, lithium batteries and on the roof i have 2225 watts of solar power or the solar panels get the solar power from the panels so that's uh two and a quarter kilowatt is sitting on top of the trailer so i just don't have any problem at all powering anything the fridge is running in there right now the lights are turned on mini splits running um, this panel in the front, I've had people ask me too, this panel. Uh, people make covers to go over them. I, all kinds of stuff I've seen. I, really all you need is a plate in front of it to keep bugs and stuff from going through and hitting the, uh, the coil in it. Uh, this does just fine again. i got several thousand miles with this and I don't have any bugs inside of it. I don't have any damage. There's uh, plenty of room between it to uh, exchange air. Uh, the CFM flow is fine. Um, my family's been in heat and air business since I was old enough to hold a wrench. Uh, this works just fine. So anyway, I don't know what else really to tell you about it other other than, you know, it just looks kind of nice up there. You got the uh, aluminum rail around the outside of the top of the trailer. And then above it, you got solar panels 
with a uh, matching aluminum frame around them. So I went with the black because the rest of the trailer had black accents on it. Um, also the brackets that uh, I had made, they are powder coated. That's not spray paint on those. Those are actually powder coated. And where I attached them to the trailer, uh, not only did I bolt them, I didn't, I didn't really silicone them. I used 3M trim tape. So behind these, you can probably see right there, you can see the 3M trim tape. So not only does it help hold it, it also Okay, so on the inside for the solar, for monitoring it, I really want a servo, but uh, I'm not willing to drop the $500 yet, but soon, but anyway, in the meantime, I just used an old iPhone. All of Victron's equipment that I know of or what I bought, uh, it's all Bluetooth. So it works real good. So I just use an old iPhone. I've got it up here on a USB charger. It stays here on the wall all the time. In fact, it's been up here now for way over a year, maybe a year and a half. Uh, I also works have it fine. on uh, my phone so I can look at it even if I'm outside. Again, I'm at two... Uh, 26.95 volts uh, right now I'm currently pulling 14.86 uh, amps because the air in the fridge is running uh, I'm at a state of charge of 100% I'm actually making more power than I'm using right now so I'm uh, making on solar array 1 I'm making 26.3 amps and on solar array 2 I'm at 16.8 amps right now so I'm only using 15 so Really, Solar Array 2 is making up everything I need and some, and Solar Array 1 is just charging the batteries back. Um, this works really well. Uh, the servos are nice. Uh, they're really nice, and I really want one. Uh, but for now, I mean, this this really works well. So, um, if you got an old iPhone, just uh, you use it for a while. But this is, uh, this is how I monitor my batteries and uh, how well the solar is doing. Uh, and it's a typical day here. It's uh, about 86 degrees outside right now. And it is, uh, you can see on the phone there, it's 1140. And I'm making, uh, making 727 watts on a solar array one, which is three panels up. And the second three is array two. And I'm making 464 watts on that one. So I'm making well over a kilowatt of power right now. Uh, and as I said before, it's capable if I got 100% and everything was beautiful and everything was great and it never is and never will be but it would be capable of two and a quarter kilowatt with 2,225 watts um, typically if I, if I get half of that I'm happy and it runs everything and I've topped off by night time so anyway that's uh it's kind of what I wanted to tell you and show you about uh, the solar and how I monitor it and how we keep up with it and kind of see where it's at health wise so Hope this has helped you guys uh, finish watching the video about how we secured it, how we made it, how we came up with the idea. And um, hope this helps you guys. All right, see you a little later. So if you got any questions, uh, some other way that I could have done that, maybe to make it even stronger than what it was, uh, comment below. I'm open for suggestions, but I can tell you that is rock solid up there. You can't move them at all. And... Uh, I typically travel between 65, sometimes 70 if the road conditions are good and nobody's around. And uh, I've had zero issue, issues out of them. So anyway, if this has helped anybody, do the like button, hit the bell, subscribe if you feel like it. There's a lot more videos on our channel about solar and cargo trailers, uh, cooking and oh, just anything you can think of. We just, we just share our experiences with everybody. So uh, until next time, I'm going to get back in here and do some other jobs. We'll see you a little later.